All right. Uh, good evening and greetings uh, to all our venerable colleagues. And good evening and blessings to all our friends who are watching us online, Facebook and YouTube Live. Uh, so we would like to uh, welcome all of you to our biweekly sutra discussion. Uh, so let us uh, begin the discussion by paying respect and homage uh, to the Buddha. So let us recite Namo Tassa three times together. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa I pay my respect and homage to him, the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Fully Enlightened Buddha. <clears throat> uh, dear Venerable uh, Bhikkhus and Bhikkhunis, uh, it's a great joy to have you for our bi-weekly Sutra discussion. And uh, uh, so I would like to introduce our Venerable Monks and Nuns to our audience. Um, so today we have some Monks and Nuns joining for the bi-weekly discussion. Um, other Venerable Monks and Nuns, uh, I think they are still busy with their uh, commitments. Uh, some nuns actually informed me that they have some medical appointments, they have other <laughs> appointments, so they are kind of busy. So whoever is here, uh, we are very happy to have all of you. Um, so today we have a uh, venerable uh, Digale Somawangsha joining us uh, from Vancouver, Canada. And then we have uh, Venerable uh, Dhammadina uh, joining us uh, from Washington, D.C., uh, Virginia. Uh, we have Venerable Trudeau uh, joining us from uh, Florida. And we have Bante Kusala joining from here, uh, Mississauga, Toronto. Uh, we have Bante Jinananda joining us from Ottawa, Canada. And we have Bhante uh, Shantasobana joining us from Los Angeles, California. Then we have uh, Venerable Muniputto joining us from Seattle, uh, USA. Then we have Venerable Joe Chen uh, joining us from Singapore. It's uh, <laughs> early in the morning uh, for you and always happy to see you. <laughs> I said we missed you for the last couple of uh, discussions. And we have Venerable Sarnapala Tero joining us from uh, Vancouver, uh, Canada. Then we have uh, Venerable Samadhikama Vimla Jyoti again joining us from here, Mississauga, Toronto. And as I'm respectfully welcoming all our Venerable Monks and Nuns to our bi-weekly discussion, I also would like to uh, welcome uh, all our friends who are watching us on YouTube and Facebook live. And I have a kind uh, request uh, for um, everyone. And uh, if, if you uh, can share uh, this discussion in your social media timelines, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, as you know, uh, Dhammadana uh, Sabbadana Jinati. The uh, gift of Dharma excels all other kinds of gifts. So through the gift of Dharma, uh, you never know, uh, someone might benefit uh, from today's discussion. Uh, so I would like to uh, encourage all our friends to share this 
uh, discussion in your social media timelines. Uh, dear friends, so today's uh, discussion is uh, about the, uh, the 10 principles taught by the Buddha for the good governance. In, uh, in Pali, uh, it is known as Dasa Raj Dhamma. And I think this, uh, uh, today's discussion is very timely. We all know what is happening in the world. Uh, we see the chaos uh, in some countries. There are social, political unrest in, in some countries. There are economic crises and uh, people are suffering. I see, it, so the leadership is very important. Um, Buddha did not just talk about Nirvana, enlightenment, Four Noble Truths, or karma, or the Paticca Samuppada, or dependent origination, or rebirth. He also uh, wanted to talk about uh, our, uh, our welfare, our happiness in, uh, for now. Uh, I see uh, uh, you know that when we read the sutras, uh, of course, Buddha taught Dharma to bring happiness. So all discourses are indicating three kinds of happiness. The uh, Sanditika Sukha, Samparayaka Sukha, Paramatta Sukha. And Paramatta Sukha is the Nirvana. And uh, Samparayaka Sukha is the happiness for later. Uh, and Sanditika Sukha is the happiness for now. And uh, so, now, of course, we are living in the real society. <laughs> we are living here. And of course, even for you, you all are joining here uh, from different cities. And you know that people are uh, doing everything to live a happy life. But if they are not happy and they, uh, of course, uh, uh, protest, and that's why we see the political and social unrest in so many countries. Uh, so it's also, they want the government to change, they want presidents to change, prime ministers to change. So um, today, whatever we're discussing, this is not a political platform. I had to emphasize on this. This is not a political platform. Uh, this is uh, a, a platform where we can shed light with respect to uh, wisdom, knowledge, happiness, where people can see the, uh, can be, uh, have hope for a happy and peaceful life. And uh, you all are well versed in the Dhamma. And uh, so this Dasaraja Dhamma uh, are very important, like, you know, maybe you can shed some more lights. Uh, so I would like to invite Bhante Kusala to briefly give an introduction to the Dasaraja Dhamma 10 Principles of Good Governance. Venerable Kusala. So um, this is a very timely discussion, as we all know. And if you have not uh, heard of the crisis, economic crisis going on in Sri Lanka, uh, please Google it and you will get tons of information um about the real situation there i think not many news channels here uh, in canada or in the us are reporting about it they may not be very interested in that about what is happening in that small island in south asia and everybody is protesting on streets um, and i am personally uh, affected as a sri lankan but i don't want this discussion about any any king or any ruler uh, i just want this discussion to be about uh, good governance you know what the buddha has spoken about good governance in the in in buddha's teachings and before we begin that kind of a discussion i like to say that you know it must be remembered that the buddha was born into a society which comparatively speaking was uh, politically advanced and through the ages had developed certain very solid ideas of government and he belonged to a, a powerful family himself so he learned this from his childhood 
Um, and although he renounced the position of uh, governing, he closely associated many kings, many rulers, and they constantly approached him for advice. So uh, when it comes to uh, good governance, we talk about the 10 good governing principles, Dasa Raja Dharmas. Um, these Dasa Raja Dharmas, 10 royal principles. Um, Raja here is a governing, uh, ruling, and dharmas, the principles. Um, I think sometimes we may forget these uh, in a moment of crisis and we may think these are not practical, uh, but let us take a look into what these actually are. So the first one is being liberal uh, and avoid selfishness. Um, in that, you know, you have to think about the poor and also the business people um, and think about, you know, ways in which the country can progress uh, by using his power not to destroy, but to improve the quality of lives of people. And the second one is maintaining a high moral character himself, personally, uh, practicing the five precepts is advised for the king and the subjects will follow accordingly. And the third one is to be prepared to sacrifice one's own pleasure for the well-being of the subjects. Um, and this is always a must because when the king is or the ruler is involved in indulgence too much, he may forget the needs of the people and that way uh, the country will go down the hill. And the fourth one is to be honest and maintaining absolute integrity. This is also a, a quality that the ruler should have. Honesty is the best policy above all um, within himself and within the family and within uh, the governing um, area, to be honest, you know, in terms of taxes and how money is spent and um, how the budgets are drafted and all these are to be considered by the king. Um, and the fifth one is being kind and gentle. A king has to be a gentle person, a kind person. And the next one is leading a simple life for the subjects to emulate. So because the the people follow what the king does, what the ruler does. So living a simple life uh, will set an example to people who uh, you know, look at the king and the way he lives. The next, the seventh one is be free from hatred of any kind. Mm -hmm. um, if he starts hating mm -hmm. the nearby mm -hmm. subordinate kingdoms, that means he's calling for war and this again means uh, loss of lives and wealth and uh, properties, damage to properties. And this can be avoided if he is not merely acting on hatred. The next one is exercising nonviolence. This includes uh, not only the human beings, but also the animals, you know, thinking of their welfare as well. Next, uh, practicing patience. Um, you are patient in every situation without making quick decisions. Uh, you take time, you get the advice because you know you are responsible for um, these decisions. So you take advice from your, your board, um, your advisors, and accordingly you make a decision considering everyone's opinion. And the last one is respecting public opinion to promote peace and harmony. Uh, uh, so now uh, more than ever, public opinion matters in Sri Lanka and in other countries. People get into social media, people express their concerns and it can change in a matter of seconds. Um, and they may not be in favor of the king uh, if they notice that the king is not governing according to the good governing principles. So these have been practiced by, in the history by 
you know, one of the famous rulers in India, the Emperor Asoka, <clears throat> he went into Kalinga war and he realized that, oh, what have I done? Oh, look, look at all these, you know, wives without husbands and children without parents, all the properties that are damaged. And he realized this is not the way to govern. And he stopped all the warfare and he started developing a good govern, you know, developing the country with good governing principles. And he succeeded. And ultimately, instead of sending ambassadors, sending uh, warriors to different parts of the world, he started sending uh, Dharma Dutas, those who had the mission of Dharma to govern um, with Dharma into the world and such as sending his own son Mahinda to Sri Lanka. And until this date, Buddhism prevails in Sri Lanka because of King Ashoka's missionary works. So that's all I will share at the beginning. And uh, I'm sure stories will emerge um, and the discussion will be rich with the opinions and Dhamma shared by other monks. Thank you for the opportunity to open up the discussion at this time, Bhante. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Bhante Kusala, for uh, beautifully uh, uh, explaining the 10 uh, uh, principles for good governance. And I think although uh, it's called the Dasa Raja Dhamma, Raja, Raja is the king, uh, but it, it also should, it, in today's version, it's the president, maybe president, prime minister, who is the ruler of a nation, the country. So uh, now we, we see these uh, 10 principles. And, and of course, you just uh, uh, gave a reference to a king, uh, Emperor Ashoka, who followed those uh, 10 principles. And we all know that he uh, was known uh, as the Chanda Ashoka. Uh, he was known for he was, uh, cruelty, violence, uh, doing a lot of nasty stuff. Um, uh, and, but then he changed him, uh, his life. And uh, after Kalinga War, then he became the Dhamma Soka, the, the king of Dharma. Dharma mean, in, in this case, you know, uh, the whole purpose of the Dharma is to bring the the joy, peace, and happiness to, to everyone. So uh, now um, I have a, a general question uh, for everyone. I think you can speak up or uh, whatever you feel like is good for our audience. Now, uh, of course, in today, we have all these uh, presidents, prime ministers. Uh, do you think, uh, Today's presidents and prime ministers who are in power uh, can follow these uh, principles. And if they can, then do you think we would have a, like, you know, we can imagine uh, kind of a, a great nation, great country. Is it possible to build such a nation through these 10 principles? Anyone? Uh, do you have any clue? Anyone would like to? Uh... Yes, Bante. <clears throat> I just want to uh, thank you uh, for selecting this topic, and yeah. it's very nice to hear from the from the beginning of this discussion that you set the floor for us to explore the knowledge of uh, Dharma-centered mm -hmm. governing. And thanks to Bante Kusala for uh, putting the foundation for a nice discussion. So when we look at the uh, 10 uh, virtues of a ruler, that's the Raja Dharma, as you asked, uh, it is applicable to any country at any time because of its uh, essence of the Dharma. It, mm. This set of principle never talks about uh, making people unhappy. Uh, they are all about uh, uh, some qualities that a ruler, not only ruler, the whole administration should follow. If we single out that only the president or the king or any particular person who is on top of the administration should follow this, I think that makes uh, no sense. But uh, this has this set of teaching could be followed by 
even uh, institution like temples, like uh, you know, uh, you know, rural administration. So that has that essence in these ten uh, uh, virtues of ruler. So I think uh, the simple answer is is that this set of principles could be followed by any uh, head of governments in modern world because it talks about how to regulate his duties and responsibilities in the government for general people. However, it is uh, doubtful that uh, many rulers today do not know such things. Mm. Uh, if you look at the constitution and uh, bylaws and other regulations that, uh, that, has, that have been uh, followed by each country, they are very nice statement and uh, they are very powerful statement too. But many countries have failed to uh, follow these principles due to some political, social, economic reasons. Uh, and I think uh, if uh, those uh, you know, community leaders and leaders of the countries understand that these problems should, could be solved by following these principles, mm. I think uh, they can somehow manage to uh, overcome some problems. Actually, the problem in today's world uh, is that those rulers do come to the power <clears throat> with mandate and their hopes is to, uh, maybe in the intention would be good, but intention doesn't make any sense if they do not have uh, such principles in their, in their you, know, you know, manifesto, whatever they have in their hand. So I think uh, back, uh, going back to uh, uh, the Buddha statement in different discourse, discourses like Chakravati Siena, Dagganya, and even Mangala Sutta, mm. the, uh, the country should be controlled uh, in a, uh, and also ruled by these Dhamma so that the people would be very happy economically, psychologically, and otherwise, so that uh, the, the rulers find easy to continue their duties and responsibilities. I think that in addition to that, Pante, this uh, Dasaraj Dharma uh, sh uh, shows that the Buddha's, uh, uh, Buddha's knowledge about the, mm. uh, uh, ruling the countries because he is coming from a royal family. Mm. Yeah, we can assume that he was in the part of uh, Sakyan uh, administration for, for a certain period of time. And he knows what exactly the, the ruler should do for the uh, royal family and also the country, uh, expecting the prosperity of the country. So that he thought that definitely people come to spirituality when only people are happy with uh, basic needs. In order to have mm -hmm. basic needs, one family, one society cannot do much if not the government support with regulation, taxes, and other things. So that uh, this is actually uh, uh, pre preparing people into such a spiritual uh, you know, end. If the country has no any regulations whatsoever on economy, on agriculture, in other sectors, how can the, even the Buddha and other religious people uh, taught the uh, you know, psychological and uh, spiritual teaching for people salvation so that the buddha's knowledge has been widespread widespread into such areas so that i i undoubtedly think that this is one of the greatest uh, thing to think about how great the buddha's wisdom on on administration so mm -hmm. i have so many things to share i would take time uh, but for the moment i just want to answer your question yeah this is act applicable when only those rulers understand what they are doing for mm. their country and people. Yeah, thank you, Bhante Jinananda for sharing more lights. Uh, and yes, uh, I agree with you, you know, uh, even the, you know, to follow these principles, you, you don't have to have a particular time. You can, we can just say, okay, this can be practiced, followed only by people in the past, not by the people in, in, the, in the modern time. Uh, but uh, as, you, as, you, as we know, uh, uh, what we call uh, Dhamma taught by the Buddha is uh, Akalika. 
is the timeless. This Dhamma can be practiced by anyone. So to really benefit from this Dhamma, I think we have to put that into action. Now what we see in the world, uh, I think we see the political and social chaos, unrest, people are protesting, marching on the street because uh, maybe the rulers are not <laughs> following these principles and people are suffering. So, uh, but the uh, Santa Sobana from uh, Los Angeles raised your, uh, your hand. I'm pretty sure you have uh, something very interesting to share with us. So thank you very much, uh, all venerable sirs. And uh, this is a very uh, timely manner topic today. Yeah. And uh, thank you for bringing this up. And uh, especially when it comes to power, uh, all human beings like to like to have the power. We all struggle. And uh, why this kind of principles more important, especially when it comes to like uh, today environment, when you become a leader, the one of the the quality that you gain, the responsibility you gain, you are you have opportunity to to change the situation. So as example, like uh, Venerable Kusala mentioned that uh, regarding the King Asoka, that he, he declared war and then after that, he saw what happened. So he went back to himself and he, he reflect on his own actions. And then he understood it is not the right thing. And then he changed it himself. This is the most important, the, the power that have when you become a leader, because you have opportunity more than any other person, you have opportunity to, to change and take mm. decisions. But so when it come to the human power, uh, that if the, this kind of principles allow us to build up the power, because the, when it come to the power, it doesn't come naturally. It has to build. So the thing is, if we build with our emotions, it's not going to work for the society. So it needs to build out of the, the most fundamental human qualities. So then it can effect that it can apply for each and every person. So these qualities, the, the, these qualities, it's kind of like tools that you can build up the power when you become a leader. And then at the same time, when you reflect on you and, and sometimes that what today, the most of time, the leaders, they, they go with their own self-centered opinion. Mm. And uh, because of that, they get into more, more difficult situations. But these kind of things, as example, this all these ten qualities, like uh, Venerable Kusala mentioned, it is when it when you become a leader, more than what you do, it is very important what you don't do. So, as example, maybe you can you can govern the country for a hundred years, and you don't you give all the facilities to people, but in case if you kill one person, maybe. <laughs> It's going to destroy your entire situation. And, and at the same time, the quality of the character. So as example, when we look like uh, last uh, 10 years around the world that there were very good leaders, but sometimes they are misbehavior. This, mm -hmm. this effect for their whole entire career. So like that, these qualities help us to understand when somebody come to power, what you should not do so the, if you anchor to these kind of qualities, it helps for you to, to build up your strength and the power to become a more profitable person for you and as well as for the, the society. So the important thing is, because there was a research has done 1971 in, in Stephen University mm -hmm. that uh, it's how this happened, this, uh, this doctor called for some ordinary students from the university and uh, they build up a kind of like a prison 
and uh, then uh, they put some students as guard prison guard and some mm -hmm. students as prisoners so then they told okay you going to the, the prison guard okay you going to take care of these uh, prisoners for two weeks and you are responsible yourself to to maintain this place so the students that's all the, the sign for the research they all used to be friends but whoever came prison guard start to torture and give a hard time abuse his own friends so the whoever used to came as prisoners mm -hmm. so it shows when you come to the power if you don't anchor if you don't build up if you don't glue if you don't uh, step on the spiritual with the spiritual foundation and sometimes our our own self opinions because uh, most of time our own self opinion come out of the greed hatred and the delusion not knowingly reasons how things come to be as they are so in that way when we take decisions it's always take us to unnecessary situations so it, that's why especially more than the, during the buddha's time more than that time i think today this kind of principles very matter for the society mm -hmm. because today we depend on the information mm -hmm. environment and uh, and so the during that time there were wise people more close to the king and they used to follow the the the, the king used to follow their advice but today it's not like that and uh, especially there there are very kind of like uh, when it come to information and no one knows what is right or what is wrong so if you if the if the leaders more close to this kind of spiritual foundation i think and out of there the power they can bring more profitable things for themselves and at the same time for the society Mm. Yeah, no, uh, so thank uh, I think it's very important that you brought up that experiment done by Stanford. Uh, it's, it's known as the Stanford uh, prison experiment. That's and right. I think, That's right. Uh, yeah, so uh, it is a great example. Mm. Uh, so, uh, Venerable uh, Trudeau, uh, you raised your hand. Uh, so, what do you think? Oh. Salutations to the Maha Sangha, salutations to, to all the venerables and most venerables as present. Um, so I'd like to start off with um, yes. all of my, uh, um, all of the listeners across the world. Just imagine if a Buddhist monk was on the cabinet of the president. <laughs> if there was a Buddhist monk as an advisor to the president or to the king or to any uh, of the hierarchies uh, across the world. It would make a, a big difference. Though a monk could probably not persuade with, with them, right? To effect the purpose of persuading them in making certain decisions effectively and for the benefits of well being. They could probably spend some time with the presidents. We'll use the word president since everyone is presidents nowadays. <laughs> I, I believe that people make the mistakes that they make, including presidents, because they are too human, is that they, there is a lack of necessary time to reflect. There is lack of wise counsel <laughs> from white counsel from um no. okay sorry yeah continue so yeah. <laughs> so, I, um, so there is a, a lack of wise counsel from someone in the spiritual realm there is a lot of facets that we can look at here it it really it really fathoms us as humans us as monastics, when we sit there and we look at these things, particularly myself, um, having been in positions of public trust, having been through all of the rigorous um, testings 
like psychological testings in order to hold such positions uh, before becoming a monk. Uh, and still now, uh, you know, involved within the, the court system as I was an uh, interpreter at, at the courthouse. Um, so we sit there and we, we ponder, we're like, what is going through this person's mind? What is, what is going through this president's mind? Mm. The state of mind of the president. And we ask, how, how could you make that decision? Did you, did you think about this thoroughly? Did you think about this carefully? Did you receive wise counsel? Did you receive wise counsel from a Kalyanamita? Did you receive wise counsel from a spiritual leader? Is there a spiritual leader on your panel? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it becomes very questionable as who is on their, their panel. Um, it's tough being a president. Uh, I'm not sure that a lot of people can say, you know, I asked my dad, I said, my dad's very political. He's a military lieutenant in the intelligence unit in the mm -hmm. Vietnam War. <laughs> and when we sit, I said, Dad, you want to be president? You're always, you know what's going on. You know more than all of us. He says, oh, no, headache. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so the, these type of questions come in mind. Maybe, maybe the next time we see someone gets elected, that the people, you know, voice their opinion and maybe encourage that maybe there should be a spiritual leader as part of this. Now, I wanted to go back to what I said earlier, which is the lack of re reflection and lack of wise counsel is because I think that the speed of our lives as laymen, laywomen, and even monastics, very busy. And so we, we too lack uh, self-reflection and to think wisely, we too simply forget uh, the, the things, the list of things that we have to do as prescribed by the Buddha. And so therefore, if we forget, the presidents too forget. And they have so many people on their panel to remind them of all of these things. I believe that could, they could make probably wiser choices if someone on the panel uh, you know, spends good time with the president. I think the presidents need more spiritual time. I, mm. I think there's a lack of that. I'm going to take a good guess because I don't, I don't sit in there. I don't sit at the White House, nor do I, you know, have coffee with any presidents around the world. But I, you know, I, I would say that when a person, any person's in position of public trust, in position of power, that they really think about the first noble truth, the application of the first noble truth, and to also think about the legacy that they leave behind. Who do you want to be remembered as? Do you want mm -hmm. to be remembered as Angulimala? Do you want to be remembered as uh, King Ahsoka, one who changed completely? And I think in modern day, a wise person would take actions and to leave a legacy of inspiration to other future emerging world leaders. We all have been moved by someone who has changed the world in some way, shape, or form, like Mahatma Gandhi, Dr. Martin Luther King, and the late Venerable Thich Nhat Hanh, of how they courageously stepped forward the howling wind uh, to deal with worldly affairs. And I'm pretty sure they were afraid uh, that someone could shoot them one day because they are in opposition of the grand picture. Mm. But because they did so, they are saints in the eyes of the people mm. for the sacrifice, the willful choice, knowingly, willfully, and intentionally uh, stepping forward to, for the benefit of 7 billion people. Uh, so, you know, as we go along, I probably have more to add, but I'd like to yield the floor back to the, uh, to the Sangha. Yeah, th thank you, Venerable Trudeau. Uh, actually, it is uh, possible for even modern uh, leaders, the president, prime minister, to, uh, uh, to get elevated to sainthood even. even uh, let's say when we read the Sri Lankan history, like uh, there are still some uh, sacred places, like uh, what we call uh, Mahasan Dehali. <laughs> uh, those who pass by, there's a small temple People, you know, uh, uh, get off the bus and they uh, make a donation to that particular 
uh, temple and then they continue their journey. So people are still worshiping them. I think uh, uh, even today, uh, uh, another uh, legendary figure uh, is uh, uh, the South African president, uh, Nelson Mandela. He is highly respected, highly uh, honored in the world. Even, even Canada gave him the honorary citizenship and he has uh, uh, some honorary citizenships of different, uh, some countries. And he, he was honored like that because maybe uh, looking into his, uh, his uh, character, his personality, what he did and what uh, he talked about for years as a South African president, and I, I, I believe he uh, knowingly or unknowingly uh, had these uh, 10 principles, right? So uh, now uh, when we talk about these 10 uh, principles, these are the positive qualities, the virtues, let's say. Um, now uh, these qualities are also indicating something opposite. Let's say if somebody, uh, if people are marching out on the street, if people are protesting on the street, uh, holding the uh, blackguards and, and the board saying, we want peace, we want peace. So what does it indicate? That means there's no peace in the, in the nation, <laughs> right? So that, that's a part of the, I think the critical thinking. So, um, and, and, and so like uh, these qualities, let's say the, if you go uh, uh, every virtue, uh, meaning dana, let's say giving, the generosity, uh, helping the people, maybe this, the, the king is not helping. And the sila morality, maybe the king, the president, the prime minister, uh, is not virtuous uh, and and parichaga and uh, the the president prime ministers are not sacrificing uh, some of their wealth for the, the greater benefit of the citizens uh, and uh, uh, presidents and prime ministers are, are not being uh, upright uh, and and they are being maybe crooked and, uh, and the presidents and pre uh, prime ministers are not being gentle, they're not being soft, they're not being kind. They, they are in fact showing their, uh, the crudeness, uh, their, uh, the, uh, the bad side of their personality. And, and the, the presidents and prime ministers are angry they're, and they are showing their anger through some actions. Uh, so they, they have no self-control. And, uh, and they are putting more violence through maybe their soldiers or police officers. And, uh, and they're not being patient. And they're not respecting the public opinions. They are avirodha. So now, if, if presidents and prime ministers of modern time uh, could follow these uh, principles, and I believe we uh, can see just minimum uh, problems, issues in the society. So what do you think? Uh, Venerable Ananda Kalubovile. Yeah, uh, thank you, Bhante Saranapala and uh, all the Venerable Sirs. So uh, I think it's a very timely discussion and yeah. uh, I was thinking that uh, I was, while you were speaking, I was thinking uh, back in the day that in order to understand a particular religion, you always have to tally it with the contemporary politics of the particular country, as yeah. well as the uh, geographical uh, power play which uh, happened at that particular country, take Islam, Christianity, Buddhism. There's a certain uh, setup which builds up to that. So politics of a country is very related to religion. We speak nowadays about uh, secular states, however, uh, all these major religions in the world have been uh, more or less associated, um, affiliated with uh, politics and religion. That affiliation has been there forever. And uh, uh, well enough, if you if you look into all the religions again, Bible, 
the way the Ramayana is about the virtues of a king. Krishna yes. says in the uh, Bhagavad Gita of a virtues of the virtues of a king. And uh, Buddhism, we have a lot of discussions with uh, Kosal Rajuru and Richavi Kingdom. And uh, I think uh, one very interesting thing why Buddha's ten virtues are very applicable and uh, uh, why I think that it's very significant to even study it further is that first of all, I think the time Buddha has uh, come to the world is a very interesting time period. Uh -huh, so people uh -huh. call it the axial time, actually. The axial yeah. time where uh, the three regions, the Europe uh, with the Athens and the Greek and the Roman uh, with the uh, Hellenic philosophers, yeah. the Indian Upanishads and the Confucius related uh, Chinese uh, uh, philosophers, they all came out with very interesting ideas and they have greatly impacted the politics of each each country around the globe so it's a very interesting mm -hmm. time period and uh, uh, that's also a very interesting uh, setup because at the during the birth of buddha there was this Arab, aristocratic uh, or um, king based uh, aristocratic based uh, ruling uh, of kings at the same time there were there were elements of democracy like in the lichavi uh, lichavi rulership so that is the very same time where the current day democracy also has popped up in Athens, uh, 500 BC, 500, uh, 400 BC. So I think it's a very interesting time setup when Buddha appeared in this world. And the second thing is that, uh, like uh, Bhante, uh, Bhante uh, Jay mentioned, uh, Jinananda mentioned, that uh, Buddha has, I'm sure that he has gotten his, uh, uh, he was bred to be a king. So he has uh, most likely undergone diplomacy, uh, political science, and all the strategy making. I'm sure that he has gone through a very thorough, uh, a, a thorough king breeding program. Uh, I think uh, even Jaina Mahavira probably had the same uh, background as Buddha. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, most importantly, and of course that uh, we cannot forget that uh, he he conquered desire. He knew uh, the length and breadth of the mind. So like uh, Bhante uh, Santos when I was mentioning the prison experiment, we have this innate quality of desire and uh, doing all uh, bad things with, it, with that desire. So Buddha being mastery, uh, a master of that, uh, made sure that it was a good uh, uh, background that he had. He already knew politics, he knew his mind, and that was adding up. But most importantly, I think there's this other aspect like Karl Marx, like uh, all the other uh, reformists, I think Buddha was a reformist in that mm -hmm. particular uh, particular period. Because yeah. when he came out and said, Natacha, Vasalo, Hoti, Kampana, Hoti, Brahmana, I think that was a huge reformation uh, for the entire Indian uh, Vedic based setup. That was a big challenge, actually. So uh, I think Buddha being a king and being a reformist came up with these 10 virtues. I'm sure that even I, I, I was reading it today, but I think someone should uh, do a very thorough research on uh, all these 10 virtues and see how we can apply it to the modern day. Uh, I think uh, if you take all the big religious leaders, Jesus, uh, Prophet Muhammad, Buddha, uh, Prophet Muhammad came up with his own uh, system, uh, religious political system. In mm. fact, uh, Islam world has Sharia as uh, religion as part of their uh, ruling system, uh, the law system, legal system. Uh, very interestingly, Jesus probably did not have a major background in uh, politics, but Buddha did have a, a good background in politics. And that mm. time period was very opportune, where elements of democracy was popping up, there was uh, aristocracy. Uh, so I think uh, adding on to that, him being a reformist, uh, like uh, the current day reformist we find Karl Marx. I think it has to be studied in depth. In fact, uh, I am not very aware of uh, an in-depth uh, uh, 10 virtues. I have seen the 10 virtues, I know the rough meaning, but I think someone should really go and uh, get into the deep meanings of these 10 virtues to see how we can apply it to the current world. Yeah, no, that, that's a great suggestion, uh, uh, Venerable Ananda. Uh, I, I think we, people have to do more research into this, right? Uh, to see a, a good political system in every country. I think the, the scholars have to do more research and what are these 10 virtues? Is, is, I, I remember uh, the, his solo Dalai Lama uh, at one of the uh, conferences organized by the well-known uh, scientists in the world. There actually he said, Did you guys are doing research into the anger, greed, hatred, all the negativities, negative emotions. Now, why don't you try to do some research into 
compassion, kindness, love, and see what happens. But at the beginning, the, the neuroscientists were kind of doubtful. They did not want to listen. But I think it was uh, Richard Davidson who paid attention to uh, Dalai Lama's request and now see what happened. And I said, this is a great, I think those uh, uh, people who are, are watching us, I know there are people watching this discussion on Facebook and YouTube Live. And maybe you could, if you uh, know some scientists or political scientists even, uh, to encourage them to do re more research into these 10 virtues. I think if we can do the research and uh, shed more light, I think the, you know, we can see more stability in, in the world. Now we see the uh, in, uh, instability in many countries uh, in, in, uh, in uh, now currently in Peru, there's a huge uh, protest going on. And then we see in Sri Lanka, the huge protest going on. In, in, uh, there was the Arab Spring they, some years, a few years ago, uh, country to country. <laughs> so I said they are rejecting the corrupt uh, leadership, I guess, right? So this is the, these 10 uh, principles are about the good uh, leadership, the, the great leadership. I think uh, through research, we, maybe we can shed much more light. Venerable Ju Sheng from Singapore. I'm pretty sure you have uh, something very interesting to share with us. Thank you, Bante. Thank you. So um, about this topic, I remember many years ago when I uh, just assigned to Toronto, I visited Bante Saranapana, and we have a discussion about the Buddha's birthday celebration in the city hall. Yeah. And then um, you mentioned something is that which I totally agree is that we bring in awareness to the people about the Buddha, the birthday yeah. of the Buddha. So the celebration now in Toronto, people know about there's such a celebration, there's a Buddha's birthday, and the key words is about awareness. Yeah. So the thing is that we talk about the, the 10 virtues, which is the Dharma. How can we bring in the awareness to the politicians, mm. whereby these 10 virtues can be used so we have these teachings from the Buddha at that time, 2,500 and more years ago, whereby it's applicable to that time. And now in the modern world, definitely there will be some things needs to be changes as what uh, uh, Venerable Ananda says that as a needs to be uh, studied into and see how do we use this in the modern world and to the modern people. <clears throat> and now for the politicians in all around the world, there are all kinds of politicians, like lawyers, like businessmen, like Trump, like uh, actors, sport people. People can become a president or prime minister and to be the leader of that, uh, the country. And as of is that due to the individual uh, interests, then things, the, the countries start to have a different types of um, leaderships and mm. how it runs. So like Venerable uh, Tridown mentioned is that politicians or this leader might need a spiritual advisor besides this person. But the thing is that whether uh, they have this spiritual person or whether can we be able to enter to this political circle and whether we are willing to enter or not. So like uh, Bante Saranapana, we have been uh, interacting with the politicians in Canada. Yeah. We invite the the mayor, we invite the prime minister, we invite the ministers too, and not just to participate in the events knowing about us, but the next step is that how can we, in a way, when we are willing to interact with them and in a way introduce the Dharma to them or to have their awareness to be influenced. So they might not need to be a Buddhist, but through our interactions with them about what the Buddha taught us in the sutra that we read and then we probably uh, look into the current co cause and condition adjust to the current cause and the condition and how we interact with them but the key thing is that are we able to be interact with them which means that can we enter into that circle or we bring them to our circle our community because uh, in, uh, in a way, I believe that venerable, uh, you know that in Buddhism, we, in a way is that we are quite um, passive. Mm. We don't quite reach out a lot. 
And since we don't reach out, people don't know about us, then <laughs> no matter how good is the sutra, how good is the dharma, there's no way for us to transmit out or to share out. Mm. We don't even need to mention about influence. Yeah. So this is something that I would like to share is that we bring in the awareness of Buddha, Buddhism to the public, to the, to the, to the government. Now, are we able to bring in the awareness of the teachings from the Buddha to different people, regardless of religious or races or gender? And mm. can we, in a way, is that make this uh, your, our country or our city a little bit better and peaceful and harmonized? So this is something I would like to share. No, thank you. Thank you very much, Jiechen, for bringing up uh, this. Uh, you know, it's all about the awareness. We have been talking about this for a long time. And, 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 and I think uh, 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 this is, uh, there's also now an academic field. There's a subject called Engage Buddhism. Right? Engage Buddhism, or, or in, in your version, I think you call it humanistic Buddhism, right? So I know a lot of great activities uh, run by the Fogun Shan, uh, uh, temples across the world and helping out the people. And I think we have to talk about this. We need to make more awareness of this. And I, I think uh, that's, that's the very reason I think why uh, we are engaging in this uh, global movement, calling every country a mindful and kind nation. And uh, so we need to talk about this. We need to get the politicians involved in this. And, uh, uh, and so once we get involved, once we get engaged, that's where the uh, change comes. But talking about this is, I think that is exactly what Buddha did. You know, he did not <laughs> stay after becoming enlightened. He did not stay in the forest and he uh, returned to the society and he did not stay in one particular place. He started traveling, going from village to village, kingdom to kingdom, meeting all kinds of people and making more awareness of uh, what he discovered. And I think uh, that is the kind of movement we all need. And of course, we, if politicians don't come to us, I think we should try to go to them, <laughs> right? So to make an awareness of this. In fact, in Canada, we were able to make more awareness of these things uh, together. Uh, so they know that's why we even were able to get a great message from the Canadian prime minister last year for Vesak celebration. So, uh, but Bhante Kusala, uh, you have, I'm pretty sure you have more to share with us. Thank you Bhante for the opportunity to speak again. I wanted to share some practical um, issues at hand uh, involving monks. Sometimes monks try to get involved with politics. Yeah. Um, what is our take on that? Um, I think oftentimes uh, I look at the way the Buddha dealt with these uh, kings and rulers and ministers and royal physicians and all these um, high ranking people mm. without directly getting involved with politics or getting into the parliament uh, per se. Uh, because every time um you want power you give promises and you say you will fulfill these once you get that power but we see just as an ordinary politician these monks also who get into power mm. you know, forget that they <laughs> gave these promises to the world yeah so the way to influence the society like Venerable uh, Zhu Xin say, said, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, I didn't mean to do that. Um, I think the influence should come um, from within, being yeah. kind oneself. Then only you can speak about kindness. Mm -hmm. Really, there, there's no way you can deliver that message um, if you are unkind within. Mm -hmm. and there's a story about a king. Uh, at the time, you know, in Jataka stories, I think his name is Ummadayanti. I may have uh, misunderstood the name, but mm. the story goes that he was uh, traveling in the city <clears throat> and he happened to see a beautiful woman. Um, and he had this experience 
called love at first sight mm. so he badly wanted this woman and later he realized that she was already married and he felt ashamed that he had these thoughts toward her mm. um, but um, as the husband of that woman came to know about the king's experience he said it's okay i know you are a good person and i will renounce my marital vows and the king can marry my wife uh, but the king at that point said i am not going to accept this offer if mm. if i submit to passion now i am setting a bad example to my kingdom mm. uh, that is not the good way to govern and i can i can keep my passion in control just like that you know whether um, you are a monk or a politician uh, when it comes to good governance i think the very first thing mm -hmm. is to think that you know sabbe satta bhavantu sukita sukita ta may all beings be well with, within you know that includes oneself um it is to say that you know if you are winning your heart if you have um your what the, um if your anger in control if you have your moral conduct straightened out um nobody is going to put fingers toward you and blame you mm. it is simple as that and we do uh, need to look at another practical issue you know in a culturally diverse society like this in a in a global world people come from different faith backgrounds and those faith traditions are so important they bring the culture even to canada to the united states they bring their culture they bring their faith they bring their clothing styles they bring all these small important elements to a new country and also looking at a traditional you know long lasting cultural country like sri lanka there are people from many faith backgrounds to that um, i think how do we rulers uh, we monks and rulers respond uh, because often times we see that you know we can't ignore a minority um, they too have needs opinions and their lives are so important and how do we respond to that we can look at what the buddha said 2500 years ago he said just as as these five great rivers you know flow into the ocean and they renounce their former identities ganga yamuna achiravati sarabhu mahi these identities are renounced once they get into the ocean it is called the great ocean that is it and all these people you know coming from different backgrounds they are your subjects <clears throat> you can favor one party and suppress the other party all of their needs are important they are vital in bringing up the economy of the country they have talents they have their voices and they also have their faith traditions so i think the ruler has to you know protect them safeguard them mm -hmm. and it is under their care that all these people won't flee the country when there is a chaos they will try to love the ruler and build a country from scratch again because they know they have trust in their ruler yeah thank you bante no, i i think uh, bante kusala you right and rightly said it to be it's beautiful and i think that this, this is what uh, mahatma gandhi once said right be the change you would like to see in the world <laughs> right so whatever positive change you would like to see in the world of course we have to be that and <laughs> and then this is also in line with uh, uh his holder dalai lama who always says if you if you have kindness in your heart you, you will be happy if you have kindness in your heart others will be happy <laughs> so uh this a uh, great saying uh and in fact i i would like to bring your attention to one of the key sutras of the buddha i think it's very important we need to talk about that today uh but we have two uh, hands raised uh, first uh, and after two of, uh, 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 after you i will 
actually read this small discourse. I think it's very uh, important, very pertinent to today's uh, uh, discussion. Uh, Venerable Ananda. Actually, I want to make it a, a very brief suggestion uh, to Bhante Sarapala. Yeah. I think uh, we understand that uh, uh, Bhante Kusula said that, uh, uh, or someone said that uh, Buddhism has always been taking a backseat when it comes to engagement uh, politics per se. Uh, we are not that engaged. But at the same time, we find a lot of monks getting involved with the uh, country's political system and uh, they are, uh, uh, you know, having that. Uh, symbiotic relationship between the politics and the religion. Uh, however, I think we also can see some great examples from the Buddhist history of uh, Buddhist uh, monks who have been. Uh, one particular monk is Bhikkhu Bodhidharma who went, to, went through Asia all the way mm -hmm. and he has been uh, doing a lot of advising mm -hmm. to uh, many emperors. I think uh, the Chinese emperor uh, at the end. And another interesting character is uh, Bhikkhu Nichiren. Uh, the Japanese monk uh, who had uh, gone through a lot of uh, uh, issues, politics, and then uh, has been, uh, again, doing a lot of good to the society uh, in a greater sense. Uh, Buddha himself, uh, starting from the, uh, the clan boss in Sri Lanka, in India, I think he has been greatly involved. Uh, this, my suggestion is uh, probably to have another extended uh, version of a discussion on how, uh -huh. how as Buddhist monks that we can, without trying to get exploited by the politicians, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> at the same time, to have a very healthy discussion on uh, um, how to uh, take these 10 virtues to a level where we can transmit it to the uh, rulers, basically. Mm. And that's a great suggestion and we can, we can definitely have another discussion on this. Uh, I think it will be very interesting. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Venerable Shanta Sobana. Yeah, uh, thank you, Venerable Sir. And uh, one thing here that I want to mention that when it comes to most of the power or the success, yeah. and people think uh, uh, people think that is the end and they hold it to it. Uh, but when it comes to the Buddha's teaching, no, it is a uh, it is a one part of life in a, in a mm. very conventional life. And then that's why in the tapa, this is a renunciation that you go into sannyasi, you kind of like uh, ascetic practice. So that is a kind of like uh, you in conventional life, you become successful, but you not hold it to that. You mm. should give a chance to other people. So that is what we don't see nowadays, even in, uh, in Sri Lanka. So, you know that they they whoever come then they think that is the end and they they hold it to it <laughs> you know so even in in our conventional life like ordinary people even ourselves if we are capable to give a chance to another person mm. you no know, that that create a huge difference in society so i think if anybody go with this teaching and uh, that uh, that person can be a more better person for himself and become a good example for the society. So I want to mention that another thing is the generosity because now yeah. people come to power <laughs> to collect, you know, there's no generosity there and the sacrifice. Mm. And in the ancient time to, to you know, in the Buddha's teaching, there are a lot of Jataka stories, how the, the, the leaders sacrifice when necessary time come. There was a, a group of deers and the king used to kill all the deers in um, and misbehave. Then the the they get the animal they gathered and then they had a discussion. Okay, uh, let let's go to the king and have a deal with him. And they were, all went to the king and told, okay, don't kill each and everybody every day. We will come one by one, and then so you can have one deer per day. So mm. the king agreed to that. And then now every day, one by one, you know, the, the, the deers used to go to the palace mm. itself. And then one day there was some, you know, the mother and uh, almost ready to deliver the baby. And then the, the deer king asked, okay, so who going to go today? So then this mother came forward and told, it is me. And he saw this, the, the, this deer that uh, almost ready to deliver the baby. And then that day, this uh, the king, the dear king, and told, okay, you wait. 
you need only one day and then you can deliver the baby. I'll go today. And then that day, the evening, that this uh, king deer show up to the palace. Uh -huh. And the butcher asked why you came, because you are the king, you should uh -huh. not come. Uh -huh. And then uh, the butcher complained to the king. And the king asked, and uh, from this uh, dear king and asked why you came here. Then the, he, this, this dear explained the, the situation. And then the king was so shocked hearing and, to, and himself, he, he thought, no, I am a human being. Still, I do this kind of things. Mm -hmm. this, animal, this animal had so much uh, good qualities better than me. And from that day, you know, he's changed himself. Mm. So like that, there are many, it's like a sacrifice. When you become the example for yourself to others, and it, 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 it can change a huge difference. Mm. So I think that when it comes to generosity today, that the most of time come to power to gain, you know, to gain. <laughs> but when it comes to the king and the beggar, the difference is the, the quality of the, the best quality of the king is the giving. Mm. and the, the beggar is always taking if the king maybe your position is the president but if you take from people you're going to be the beggar <laughs> mm. you know? so yeah. that's that, that that is something and even today that uh, especially in uh, especially these southeast countries most of the buddhist countries how the most corrupted politicians in the <laughs> world. <laughs> but but, but uh, there is a the, the, but, there is a Thai king. Yeah. The Thai king, uh, I think he died a few years yeah. back. He he was highly respected because I believe he has all he had all these uh, ten virtues. Yeah, yeah, the, the, but uh, but when it comes to the Thai, Thai king, that uh, the, the the politicians so so different than him, you know? mm. yeah, because the the government run by the the politicians. Yeah, <laughs> and as Venerable Ananda and the Bante Kusala mentioned, it is good, you know, we we take it a little bit more further forward and see how we can. You know, more interfere with this. <laughs> <topic>. <laughs> well, we don't need to interfe interfere with the violence or negativity. No, 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 no. Or, no. Uh, but still, we have to we have to come to a discussion because the reason that behind this most of the the politicians, there are very big uh, monks play a big role with them. Maybe what we need to do is we we, we should call it the dhamma diplomacy. How That's about that? <laughs> <laughs> Dharma diplomacy or Dharma diplomacy. <laughs> Where about uh, Jinananda from Ottawa? You raised your hand. Yeah, I just want to say that this is uh, very uh, crucial. I think uh, uh, usually people, mm. from people's point of view, we expect the head of the government to apply all the principles and okay we 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 are the controllers we are the people who benefit from it and having this idea in mind uh, societies do not follow certain rules sometimes we have seen good intention of rulers on with regard to good principles i think that 10 um, virtues of a ruler resonate with the all principles they come up with uh, with with their promissory notes uh, in the con constitution in their portfolio they have all good principles but uh, when they come to uh, power it's very hard in my opinion mm. to apply those uh, principles because of the geopolitics because of the race uh, for economy and you know one country cannot live alone today uh, with their own principles so we uh, so that uh, we have to understand that these 10 principles if we apply if we say that this is good for today's world at least to apply certain degree of them mm. even to discuss them you know um, in in that regard i think uh, i heard hardly uh, that somebody suggested that we should let these rulers of the countries know about these 10 principles 
and somehow have a discussion. Yes, indeed, we should do that. In terms of doing that, I think uh, we have to add uh, these uh, 10 principles into education. And mm. of course, in, in, in other words, in education, we have these similar principles, but where does this uh, uh, you know, fail and how can we refill it? And what kind of things we could sh we should do that as monks? Actually, uh, we can educate people. We can educate those uh, uh, people in the in the administration level. My first one of my first experience with the politicians is that he said that I know all the all the Buddha's teaching about the administration, but Bante, it's very difficult to implement them when we come uh -huh. to real application. So then uh, the, the, the ruler, the president or the prime minister in today's world is a particular people like us. They have, uh, they are, they are, they have 24 hours, uh, 20, uh, you know, seven days and they have their own thing. So it's, it's not that simple to mm. apply those principles, but we are not, uh, we should not be in that mindset when we uh, try our best to apply these principles because uh, look at the king emperor. He came to the right dhamma just by by the appearance of us as far as of a small monk, and that would be the turning point. And these rulers, in my understanding, are not in peaceful mindset at all. Mm. Their minds are just busy, uh, uh, you know, burning, um, uh, you know, boxes like things. And I think if they are addressed with compassion and kindness. Mm. Uh, and if we have a plan, if we can meet them, uh, I think we could uh, do a, such a, a significant change of their attitudes about mm. ruling the countries. Otherwise, we all talk about and they know they do not know anything about it. Yeah, I, I, think, I, think, uh, I think that's what I wanted to share. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bhante Jananda. I think uh, we, uh, I don't know whether you're aware of like United Nations, uh, have uh, a program called United Nations 2030 Development Goals. And uh, they are looking for all kinds of uh, development goals and ideas. And now uh, um, I, I was invited to speak at one of the UN panels uh, two years ago, and uh, they have included the kindfulness principle into the development goals. And maybe if we can talk about this, reach out to some uh, UN uh, uh, people and and talk about this. They might be interested in including these ten principles into the development goals, right? So, Bante Kusala, you. Thank you, Bante. Um, so, adding a little more into what Bante Jinan and the just brought up, you know, when someone says we can't implement these virtues, um, these principles. Um, to good governing, um, I think uh, I also see a comment here uh, in the chat box from, uh, um, this is from, I think, uh, uh, Venerable Dhamma Dinna. Uh -huh. uh, she's speaking about karma um, there. I'm trying to put these two things together. Um, and what she's saying here is that we suffer because of our own stupidity no one or nothing from outside responsible for it. When we realize this simple fact, we know how and what and when to let go, we will open to see the it is. It is actually. It's a cause of suffering and seize it. So, um, yeah, seizing it, yeah, seize it. So I think when someone says we can implement these, uh, you can definitely implement all these. You know, I'm, I'm saying, for example, virtues. If you are not virtuous, you tend to break the precepts, which mm -hmm. means you are stealing public money. And you can see what has happened because of that in Sri Lanka. People, um, the government ran out of money. They can't buy the essentials. Um, as they used to. And because of that, there is a shortage of gas, which is essential for all transportation in Sri Lanka. And there is power cutting for 10 long hours. And because of this, many hospitals suffer. 
because they can't store uh, something like insulin that that needs to be stored in a refrigerator they can't keep it long enough uh, safely and therefore doctors have become helpless and healthcare workers are suffering um, and look what not having good moral background like not keeping that second precept stealing public money has done to poor people who need urgent health care right now. Mm. So what I'm saying is that whoever says that these cannot be applied in personal life, well, think about your own karma. Do not break the second precept. Mm. Do not steal public money. Just be satisfied with what you have. Be content with what you have. And when you um, when you when you leave your position, just be clean. You 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 are happy that you did not steal public money. Mm. Just because you were given the power doesn't mean that you had to steal that money. Uh, saying that oh I could not apply the ten principles that is a total lie. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, you can be virtuous yourself, you know, and that example alone is enough. And just look at the. You know, the, the way how fast Sri Lanka went down the hill and now facing this economic crisis. These are just few examples that I can point out. And now I think, although people who live in foreign countries, they want to send money to Sri Lanka, but they don't, they hesitate because who this money is going, like who is going to handle this money? Mm -hmm. Again, the corrupted politicians, they, they have the right to ask that question because that precept aspect, you know, seal aspect, the virtue aspect is missing. Mm. So first, you need to come to that. The, the safety of people, you need to come to that. Uh, otherwise, there will be bloodshed again. Mm. And this is going to, you know, make the country so dangerous for even tourists to visit. Let's mm. not get there. Let's kind of learn the lesson now and try to uh, purify our own conduct, one's own conduct, to make mm -hmm. sure that we are not going further down mm -hmm. and that we are held with our own virtues, discipline, and a vision, a political vision, educational vision, an economic vision, so that we can bring the country back mm -hmm. with many good conditions, back in power, back in um strength back in um, uh, in track mm. thank you bante yeah I'm, I'm also kind of wondering uh, okay i will make that comment uh, briefly uh venerable Trudeau, you raised your hand do you have something to add into discussion i we can't hear you unmute, unmute. yes thank, thank you thank you for allowing me to uh, speak again uh, i'd like to make this quick i know we're running out of time uh two things uh, number one, theory. Number two, practice. So, you know, we monks are being held to a very high standards in the Patimoka. We monks cannot commit offenses, particularly the defeats. Um, and there are classifications of offenses for us. Likewise, there are also ethical and moral rules for police officers and judges Mm. and uh, House of Representatives and Senators and so on. We should hold those in position of power on a more and higher scale of such uh, standards. When we look at the 10 royal virtues that we are reviewing today, mm. hopefully in part of engaging in Buddhism, is that the people vote and the people stand up and voice their opinion on what they want to see in their current leaders and future leaders to come. Hopefully this demo talk today reaches young people and upon deep reflection uh, and thinking about everything that all of us monastics have transmitted to you all orally, that you all make a conscious choice. And I would challenge challenge the standards and burden of proof for a leader to be in a position of public trust having powers over people is a big thing mm. um 
you know, people hold umbrellas over us monastics because they revere us to hold us in deep respect. We are called venerables because we are worthy of veneration. Mm -hmm. mm. And someone told me on, on TikTok, because, you know, I have a million people on TikTok. They said, someone protect this man at all at any cost. And I thought that was very humble. The presidents and prime, minister, prime ministers and the upper hierarchies are also being protected at any and all cost. Are they worthy of such protection? Are they worthy of veneration? There are many people in position of public trust that have been called venerables like the Venerable Justice Scalia within the Supreme Court in the United States. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if we were to follow the 10 royal virtue, uh, the royal virtues here, if we were to challenge any leaders at this moment and ask them, well, oh, sir, um, in regards to Donna, for example, are you willing to take part of your pay as president, prime minister, to now help a particular region, to help your people? Because you took this office, you took an oath that you will protect, you will defend, and you will serve the people. You're in, mm -hmm. you're a servant. We are all servants here. A police officer is a peace officer. He is to a public servant. Keyword, public servant. Mm. So when we cross-examine and direct examine these type of leaders using the metric uh, and measurements here that the Buddha gave us, we can see clearly that there are certain people should not be in position of public trust. Okay, mm. moving on to the practice. Now, without getting too involved within worldly affairs and within the active leaders here, it can arouse a lot of adversion within oneself. So the Buddha teaches us not to be too aware about worldly uh, affairs and to bring it back within central to our practice as we two humans and practitioners of the Dhamma and Buddhist have a long list of things to do. As we are saying leaders have a long list of things to do, we too need to look at all of our meditation, mm. the four protective meditation functions, uh, the 10 recollections that we just uh, did last uh, week. Uh, we have precepts to keep. We have elements within the Brahma Viharas. Everything that the Buddha gave us humans to do, we have to try to go through them very carefully, very thoroughly, very effectively and efficiently. And last and, last and foremost is that if you don't like being on this planet, which I agree, sometimes things get too overwhelming in our minds and we're like, I don't understand what is going on in the world right now. This gives you strength spiritual strength spiritual motivation to be so diligent in this practice that you are determined sheer determination to reach nirvana once and for all with the remaining balance of time that you have on this earth yeah and, thank you and you won't take any more rebirths you don't have to be in this mess with leaders that is desirable or undesirable uh within the uh the 10 uh, virtues that we're here today. Thank you so much. No, yeah, thank you. Uh, I, uh, actually, you know, we can continue uh, uh, to discuss more about these 10 principles, uh, but unfortunately, we uh, came to the end of the program. And uh, I know uh, Bhante Jinanand also raised his hand to add more, but uh, maybe we, we should have another discussion to, uh, uh, to have another friendly uh, conversation about the 10 principles. So um, since uh, Bhante Jinananda raised his hand, I would like to invite him to recite the Patimokha verses today. <laughs> Bhante Jinananda. Thank you, Bhante. Uh, it's a very <clears throat> nice discussion, a timely discussion. It's a great pleasure to be with all the monks, including Bhante Sanapala. Thank you very much for your kindness. And I'm going to recite the Ova, the Patimokha for happiness of all these punks and the happiness of Sangha flow into the uh, community and my wish and all of our wish is to um, happiness for everyone in the world uh, by the power of these merits and wholesome powers may the entire 
entire world be in peace and happiness. Sabba pahabhasa akaranang Pusalasa upasambhada Sachit pariyo dapanang Etang buddhana sasanang Kanti paramang tapo titika Nibhanang paramang vadanti buddha Nahi pabba jito parupa gati Nahi pabba jito <coughs> Arupa gati samano hoti parang vihet yang to anupa vado anupa gato pati sangvaro matantang yuta chabatantasming Pantancha sayanasanang Nahi pabba jito parupa gati Samano hoti parang vihet yang to Sorry about uh, the me, sorry about I think it was the. I know you're busy there. You got uh, there are some noises noises in the background. So thank you so much, Bante uh, Jinalanda. Uh, despite uh, that uh, noisy background, you made sure to join the discussion. And also today, I'm very uh, happy. Now, Bante Nanda from uh, Long Island. <laughs> so wonderful to have you, Bante. And Bhante Sanat Vihari, you are joining from Mexico. Thank you so much for joining. And I'm very grateful to uh, uh, grateful to all of you for today's very productive and other meaningful discussion we had on the 10 principles of virtues uh, regarding good uh, governance. And uh, it, you told a lot of stories, you shared a lot of insights and light. And I am pretty sure those who can listen to this uh, uh, discussion they will really benefit. And the whole purpose of this discussion is to help the world see a good leadership. And I think we uh, uh, accomplished the mission today. So uh, thank you and may all blessings of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha continue to be with you for your good health, your health and safety. May all blessings be with you and good night from Canada. Thank you. See you in two weeks time. Thank Bye -bye. you.